Every year, thousands of artists make the trek to Nevada to display their work in one of the most extreme environments imaginable. For one week, five square miles of the Black Rock Desert is transformed into a more than 300-piece exhibition of radical self-expression. It is like the greatest museum ever. You have your piece there, you don't see any other pieces around it, and you see this vastness of the desert. Being able to see the change in scale from something from a distance and then being able to get right up to it and climb on top of it and actually touch it is amazing. Core to Burning Man culture is its non-commercial nature. Nothing's for sale here. It's purely art for art's sake. Many of the desert playa's most awe-inspiring pieces are no temporal flights of fancy. Structures like these require months of painstaking and carefully planned design, most of which happens in the place where Burning Man got its start, the San Francisco Bay Area. There is definitely a community of artists that I'm not sure would exist, at least not in this form, without Burning Man. And it's become a mecca for, for people to come here and be part of this scene. A prime example, the Box Shop Artist Collective in San Francisco, a hub of creative innovation year-round. Tell me about what we're looking at here. This is all steel. It's uh, disassembled at the moment, but all these pieces fit together on the structure. Its main tenants are a female-driven group who collaborate on jaw-dropping kinetic sculptures for Burning Man. Flaming Low Skulls is a group of 200 individuals, and we make art together. We teach people, particularly women, how to do all parts of the art-making process through this one big group sculpture. If you can get into it, you could never leave. It's addictive. Part of that addiction, a decade-long fascination with fire and designs that push the limits of interactive mechanical art. One thing that we believe in is making immersive environments. You actually walk into and become part of the art. This year, they're crafting one of their most ambitious pieces yet. Xylophage is a giant tree stump with enormous mushrooms that spout fire and sound effects. While programmers work on the wiring and triggers for those mushrooms, Sue Kamek is finishing up the casings for all those sensitive electronics. This will be a controller for our large fire mushrooms, and so the audience can push a button and make the fire poof. It takes hundreds of hours of volunteer labor to bring such an intricate design alive, and the people who donate their time come from every walk of life. Jackie Britton flew all the way from London to be a flaming lotus girl. Right, what, am I, what am I helping you with here? We are making bark for big stumpy. So you start with a flat bit of metal, you bend it, you cut it like this. Okay. And then you smack it with a hammer. It's not massively dangerous, but... <laughs> that's that's I mean, good to know that it's not massively things. dangerous. You know what I mean? Jackie's what the group affectionately calls a minion, ready to take on any task that's needed. I think that's suitably barky. Suitably barky. Okay, you know what? Two down, 100,000 more to go. <laughs> One week later, Xylophage makes its debut at Burning Man. You kind of have an idea of what it's going to look like, but it always turns out different, and it's really the road there and creating something a lot of other people are going to enjoy. Like the Burning Man himself, much of the art here goes up in smoke at the end of the week. But over the past decade, the influence of Burning Man has spread as an increasing number of these sculptures are finding new homes in urban settings. As executive director of the Black Rock Arts Foundation, Tomas McCabe helps fund community-based interactive art projects, all with the Burning Man aesthetic like Futures Past by Kate Routenbush. Futures Past is obviously like a, a Mayan temple. This is all modeled after actual circuit boards and circuitry. The foundation's first project was a David Best temple in Hayes Valley. We set up the temple and people started writing on it and, and in, the, in the beginning police would stop people from vandalizing. We had to like actually enculturate the police and the local residents. Well, that's what it's for. The Black Rock Arts Foundation has been building on the success of the Hayes Valley site. Over the past eight years, it supported more than 30 civic arts projects in the Bay Area and beyond. One of the best known is Bliss Dance on Treasure Island. There's an iPhone app where you have a photo of the sculpture on your phone and you can slide your finger up and down the sculpture and the lights will change according to which colors you select. Marco Cochran has been working for years with life-size bronzes and he's taken this classical form to a whole nother level of scale and technology. 
Art that needs viewer participation to come alive is taken to the extreme with Peter Hudson's whimsical zoetrope. It requires passersby to pound on drums to make the piece spin. In 2008, it landed next to a children's museum in San Jose. Palo Alto will soon be home to artist Charlie Gadigan's Aurora, a piece he's shown at multiple festivals across the country and is readying to install outside City Hall. This will have technology that the city can use to change lights according to energy usage or the weather or whatever the city wants the to Black do. The Black Rock Arts Foundation is not the sole champion of Burning Man artists. I think the biggest example of Burning Man art really making it into the mainstream is uh, Leo Villarreal's Bay Lights. So he took a, a bridge that was nearly two miles long and created an entire LED art piece on that bridge. The installation was privately financed to the tune of $8 million. Donors included Yahoo CEO Marissa Mayer, among a new crop of Silicon Valley patrons of technology-based interactive art. And soon, pending final approval by the city, the San Francisco waterfront will boast yet another former Burning Man creation, this one courtesy of the Flaming Lotus Girls. We've been very successful in this uh, kind of couple year cycle where we'll make the piece for Burning Man, we'll break it at Burning Man, and then bring it back and work on it and make it perfect. But definitely Burning Man, for Flaming Lotus Girls at least, is where we were born. And so that is a special place for us. 